OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. There are some things in Google that you might not know about. So that's that's what I'm kind of focusing, the Google's news about stuff and how to's. All right, so here we go. Chrome, switching between accounts. A lot of people don't know that when you open up Chrome, you are actually telling Google who you want your primary account to be. Your primary account is actually the person that will um, receive, will be able to open up links, okay, or open up files. Um, however, if I send a link to Allison Adams at gmail.com and Allison is on her network Google. Let's say I have no idea, Allison, where you work, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to make up a school for you. She works at Adams Adult School. All right. And her uh, her email address is a Adams at Adams.org. And when she opens the link that I have sent to her Gmail, she can't open it because she's in the wrong account. So you can tell Chrome that you want to be signed in to all of these different accounts. And then you can switch between them, which makes life so much easier. And you're probably right now you're going, huh? I'm going to show you how to do this. So here is my work account. Now, it just so happens that the first two letters of my first name are me. And the first two letters of my last name are H-O, ho. So I am me, ho, with a W. Me, how is work. With an M, me home is home, right? Uh, and then I'm SCOE Tech for my trainer account because Miho with a T, it just, I didn't like that. <laughs> so, so I have a bunch of different accounts that I can sign into. Now, this is going to seem really weird, but I have to do this in order to show you what I'm going to show you. Hang on just a sec. We're going to pin this. And we're going to pin that. I am pinning, so hopefully they will open again. Yes, you can do this. I'm going to be showing you how to do this too as well. I don't need that one. I can throw it away. Leave. Okay. So oh, I've just closed Chrome. Oh my God. So here we go. I'm going to open my Chrome browser. Follow along if you wish. Now you might not get this message because you don't have this little checkbox right here show on startup. All right, here are all the Chrome accounts that I have currently signed in. I actually have more than this, um, but I haven't signed into them all. All right, so I can open up Chrome, Chrome. I'm opening up Chrome in any one of these accounts. Chrome and Google are connected. So when you sign into Chrome, you're also signed into Google. When you sign into Chrome, you're also signed into Google. When you sign into Chrome, you can access another Google account, but it might not always work that well. You might not be able to get to your Gmail as well as you thought you should be able to because you want to sign into Chrome on all accounts, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna tell it I want to open up my work account And because I pinned my tabs, and yes, I will show you this in a little bit, because I pinned my tabs, they come back open for me. Now, here's my work account. And I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit. So the Chrome itself uh, doesn't zoom in. But you can see this little avatar right here. It's kind of reddish, got a red background. That's me, my, my happy little smiling face right next to the waffle. If I look right above that, I see the Chrome avatar and they are the same. They are the same. So I know that when I click on a link that is sent to my work, it will open up in this account. If I um, want to go to my drive, it will go to this account. The two are kind of connected, kind of connected. If I want to go to another account, I could do that. I could sign into my, I think I have one open. Yeah, right here. I could go, I could sign into my Blink a Binky 
account. That's a student account, believe it or not. Uh, it's just a, a fake student account, or I could sign into my SCOE Tech using my Google, but I'd never do that. I never do that. What I do is I sign into Chrome on all my accounts. So I'm going to click on the Chrome avatar, not the Google avatar. This is the Google next to the waffle. This is the Chrome next to the puzzle piece in Chrome. I'm going to click on that and watch this magic. I'm going to open up my SCOE tech account. Boom. A different window opens. A different window. Not only that, but it's a different color because I made this account have a blue uh, background. So I know when I open this up, when I'm in this account, I'm on my SCOE tech or my SCOE trainer account. If I wanted to, I could also open up my home account, which is a light blue. But I know that when I open this up, I can get to my home email or my home calendar. And this that I'm shaking right now, my home account is not connected to this, my work or my district account. Melinda, One there's a question. Sorry to yes, stop go ahead. you there. I is didn't it have to that's all right. Is it possible for you to lock the tab you pin so you don't accidentally change it? Lock? No. From Noel. No, nah, no, not locking. Okay. Um, yeah, I've I've done that to myself too. And when I and when I notice that I just hit my back button, <laughs> I'll show you the pin tabs here in a minute. So on Chrome, you can go between your work accounts, and if you have a, a Gmail account, which I highly recommend, if you have a district account. So your domain ends in something like at school.edu. Have a Google account that you use for work as well. That's what I do between these two accounts. There's a reason for that because your district might keep you from doing something that you can do with Gmail, with your free account. Okay, this is a district account at school.edu. This is a Google account at gmail.com. If you ever if you ever doubt what account you have open, just click on your Chrome avatar and you will see the email address that is listed up at the top. If you want to switch, you go to other profiles. Now remember that startup page that I showed you and you might not have it. It's lit, it's click it's bleh, it's right here in the gear. So when I go to, um, if, when I click on my Chrome avatar and I click on that little gear right here, show on startup. So you might want to select that so that you see this. Every time you open up Chrome, this happens on the device that you're on right now. All right, if I, if I have my laptop, I'm going to have to do the same thing on my laptop. It's not like I turned it on here and it turns on everywhere. I have to do it on each device. All and right. Any question. Sure. Someone says I am on, oh, this is Karen Lang on DuckDuckGo. Is that the same as Chrome? DuckDuckGo is not is a search. Um, yeah. It's not, DuckDuckGo is a search. So if you're using Chrome, you will know you're using Chrome because uh, you will see, <laughs> I don't know, how would you, oh, um, in your menu bar, you'll see Chrome. I don't know if you can see mine. It's way up at the top. I'm on a map. Um, but if you're on a PC, down at the bottom of your task tray, you'll see the red, yellow, um, green circle with a blue dot in the middle. That'll be enabled. Um, so and if you, if you have any doubts, here's, here's what the little uh, icon looks like. So click on it. And if the window stays open, you're using Chrome. If you click on it and it opens up, well, there you go. You're opening Chrome, OK? All right, so know who you are. Know who you are so you know which account to, um, to use, right? I always ask myself, who am I? Um, and I've also given myself that visual cue of a red background for my work account, a blue background for my SCOE tech, and my fake student accounts, they're all green. So I have a couple of, uh, several fake student accounts so I can take screenshots. Um, to show teachers, you know, this is what a classroom looks like from a student point of view, or this is what Gmail looks like from a student point of view, that type of thing. Okay. And somehow my chat keeps going behind. Here we go. So How Christine, can I change my logo yes. picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, your logo. So logos um, or account pictures are they're in different spots okay so the chrome avatar the chrome avatar has its own logo and the google avatar has its own logo you can make them the same or you can make them different i would recommend you make them the same uh, on the chrome i'm going to click on my chrome avatar it's at the right next to the puzzle piece here in the chrome extension right i'm going to click that and sometimes it has a little camera icon right here and you can click on it and then add a picture or there's a pencil next to your nickname all right i've nicknamed myself here and by clicking on the pencil you can nickname yourself as well so i clicked on the pencil here's where you change your chrome profile name your nickname okay you can scroll down you can pick a theme color for chrome and we can see right here here's the red Okay, lots of different colors to choose from. And then I uploaded my avatar. I was given the option to, um, to take my, or add a Google photo. Now here's the thing, if you're on a network account, you might be precluded from doing that. So you might just have to settle for one of the avatars here. And on a network account, I'm gonna hit my back button here. Um, no, wrong back button, Melinda, all right. I'm going to close this. There we go. So on my Google account, that's the avatar be underneath the Chrome avatar. Here's, oh, here we go. Here's a camera icon right here. All right. So I could click on that and upload a photo. Okay. I can change. Well, mine's already uploaded, so I could change or remove it. I don't want to do that. Um, and again, depending on your network, our network is pretty open. Uh, it allows the Chrome or the Google icon, Google avatar, there we go. It allows the Google avatar to become the Chrome avatar. Okay, so again, it different networks work different ways. When you're on the public account, you don't have any problems. You're going to go to your Google avatar. You're going to click that camera. And then you're going to change it or remove it. Um, it should upload for you. You should be able to upload your own picture. You can also go to accounts.google.com on either account, any account, and you can add your picture there as well. Okay? All righty. Um, by the way, if you click on your Chrome avatar and you see person one or person two, oh, I hate that. Name yourself. You are not person one or person two. Name yourself and make sure that the email matches the person you think you are <laughs> all right so i am scoeytech at gmail.com on this account that's why i named nicknamed chrome scoeytech on my work account my chrome nickname is mihow okay and i'm mholt at scoey.net so don't don't leave it as person one and person two because you're going to get confused is person two work or is it, um, oh gosh, is this a student account? I can't remember, right? Name yourself, give yourself a, you know, this is my work. So um, Amanda work, okay, or Amanda school, whatever. All righty, so that's the Chrome account. Sync when prompted, you will be asked, do you wanna sync your accounts? Just say yes, it's okay, trust me. Your network is not going to be doing anything to your home computer if you sync when you're at home, all right? It won't, I swear to you, I'm a Google administrator, I know these things, okay? <laughs> so don't worry about it, just sync. It's okay to sync. Um, I highly recommend you use a different color scheme for your different accounts. Look at the avatar, look at the, uh, the address listed, make sure you know who you are and ask yourself, this sounds silly, but it helps. Who am I? Where am I? What account should I be using? All right, if I'm at home, I should be my, me home. If I see me how, oh, whoop, whoop, back up. I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose my home, um, my home avatar profile. All right, moving on. You can name your windows. Now, I don't know about you, but I use a lot of tabs and a lot of windows and I go back and forth between my Google trainer and my work, uh, my, my OTAN, all right? So on the Chrome, you can do this right now. 
right now. You're going to right click at the very top of the window, uh, the Chrome window. Just find a blank spot in there next to the plus, next to, not on, next to the plus, which is the new tab. I want you to right click. Now you could open a new tab after you right click, but don't do that. You could reopen a closed tab. Mm, don't do that either. You could bookmark all of your tabs at the same time. Mm, no, don't do that. <gasps> name window. There we go. We're going to name the window. I get a little pop up and I just call this work and say OK. And then I go to my other Chrome and I right click on that window, name that window, and I call this trainer. Why did I do all of that? Because I work on a lot of different accounts. So I'll have a student window open. I'll have a um, admin window open. And I'm going back and forth between the windows. Now on a Mac, when I click Chrome, the Chrome menu up at the top of my screen, I can click on window and I can see here's my work. Here's my trainer. Whatever has the check mark next to it, that's the one that's currently in front or open. OK, so I could minimize my work. I'm working on my trainer. I'm doing stuff. I'm going to different sites, blah, blah, blah. And then it dawns on me, oh, I got to open up my work. I got to check my email. So I click the work window. There it is. Ready to rock and roll. OK, you can have lots of accounts open at this or windows open at the same time. And I took a screenshot um, on a day where I actually had every one of these windows were open. I had Google Admin, I had Google Tech, I had two student accounts, a trainer account, and a work all signed in, all on different windows, and I just switched between the two, four, five, six, however many that is. Okay, so naming windows, really easy, just right click on the a blank spot on the window, and then name it. Here we go, what's next? <gasps> pinning tabs, okay. So, pinning tabs saves you real estate saves you a lot of real estate. Uh, we have somebody at work, I won't name any names, Meta, will have 50, I swear to you, 50 tabs open at the same time, all right? And she's got like tab, tabs going all the way across and they're just so tiny and small and they're not even pinned because they just, they, they get smaller the more you have. So you can go do, you know, add a new tab, add a new tab, a lot of different websites, whatever, <coughs> excuse me. So what you do is you right click on a tab and then you click pin and then it goes over to the far left. So now I know right here I've got my calendar. I've got a Google draw uh, open. I've got my uh, a library images slides that I have that I'll show you in a minute. And here's the TDLS slideshow. When you pin a tab, I'm going to close these real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. When you pin a tab, if you close the window and open it back up, I've already done this, they will all be there for you. They will all be there for you. So will they all be there for you after you restart your computer? No. <laughs> all right. No, not after you restart your computer. But when you close this Chrome window, if or if you close a Chrome window and you pin tabs, they should open up back or they should open back up for you um, when you open the Chrome on that account again. Every once in a while, Google has a hiccup and they don't. Uh, and sometimes it realizes it hicks up, hicks up, hiccups. And it will ask you, do you want us to restore your windows? Just say yes, absolutely, okay? So you don't really lose anything. All righty. Another way to organize yourself is to have tab groups. Um, you don't like to pin, that's fine. You can, let's say you're working on different projects all at the same time. And let's say that library images and untitled drawing are related. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the tab, one, one of the tabs, one of those two tabs that are related. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to add tab to new group, yes? No, okay, add tab to new group. So I'm clicking that. I have to name the group. And you can tell that, that something's already happened, that the tab that I right clicked on has this uh, line around it now. I'm going to select a different color, make it orange, or I can make it pink. Ugh. I can make it purple. I can make it any color I want. And I'm going to name this 
drawings. Drawing. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. This becomes a toggle. So I can click this word called drawing and oh, I lost it. No, all you have to do is click on it again and then it opens, the tab opens. I can add this tab next to it to that same group by right clicking on it, add tab, add tab to group. Now, again, I'm given the option of new group still, but now I see that group that I created called drawing. Boom. And now when I click the drawing button, it closes both of those tabs. When I click it again, it opens them. Closed, open, closed, open. Okay. So you could do this for some, you know, like your, uh, you've got your calendar and your email are related. You've got your calendar open on one tab, your, your email open on the other. Boom. Put them in a, a tab group, call it email <laughs> or office. Um, and then close it, open it when you need it, close it when you want it, right? Another, it's another way to um, organize and keep keep everything on the on the top of your Chrome, your window a little bit more uh, organized and looking uh, better for screenshots. <laughs> so here you can see two screenshots. We've got uh, I have two tabs. One's called presentations, the other's called work, right? And then within the work tab, that's the second picture that's here. I've got mail and the training calendar. Um, and I could have also put my calendar calendar there if I wanted to. So you can put a lot of tabs together in a tab group. If you're doing research, you've got a lot of different sites. Boom, all done. All righty, reading list. This is something that's relatively new to Google, uh, to Chrome, um, if you, I don't have a showing, there we go. Here's my bookmarks bar. I've got a bunch of stuff that I put into uh, on my bookmarks, but there's also something called a reading list. So I'm gonna go to what I think is a safe site. So I don't, cause we, you know, we like reading. We like reading articles, we maybe tech articles, or maybe this is, there's this really great, thing uh, that I've heard about teaching with technology and I want to read more about it, but I don't want to bookmark it. I don't want to fill up my bookmark bar with a bunch of stuff that I'm going to read and then I, I don't want that bookmark anymore, right? I just want to read it. So everyone should have a reading list button in their uh, Chrome browser. If you don't see this, then hit your control shift B, control shift B, and that is a toggle for opening up your bookmarks bar and closing your bookmarks bar. Open, closed, open, right? I'm gonna hit reading list now that I see it, and I'm gonna click on add current tab so that I can come back to it later and read it. That is saved for you just like a bookmark. Well, why don't you use bookmarks, Melinda? Because I just wanna read it and then I wanna get rid of it. I want to read it and get rid of it. I don't want to bookmark it. I've got enough bookmarks already, okay? So I'm going to hit that reading list. And let's say I've already read the OTAN. All I have to do is, um, yeah, I could mark it, right? Or I can delete it. Boom, it's gone. Now I have my the other things that I wanted to read. Oh, I did the wrong one, didn't I? Oh, it doesn't matter. That This was just done as a demo for you. All right? Okay, so reading list. Really good to have, um, especially for articles that you just want to save it for later and it's saved to your account. So when you sign into Chrome and you save something to the reading list on your Gmail, that's where it will appear. If you saved it when you were using your work account, then that's where it will appear. Yes, I will be sharing this presentation. Uh, who was that? Noel. All right, shortcuts. Shortcuts. Shortcuts are really cool because they're quicker than bookmarks sometimes. So everyone go to google.com, google.com. Melinda, just real quick, another yes. question. How do you get that toolbar to stay? How do you get that toolbar to stay? What toolbar are we talking about? The bookmarks, this, this bookmark bar, you um, control shift B will turn it on and control shift B will turn it off, except when you're on 
google.com then it's always open you don't have a choice so here i'm on my calendar i can close it control shift b is a close control shift b is open you can also go into settings of chrome so um, the more button next to your avatar they call it the skinny snowman you can click there go to settings and you can find bookmarks um and just leave them on okay i think that answered your question if not let me know <laughs> okay what was i showing you oh yeah yeah okay so you went to google.com let me do it too google.com there we go so you see nothing here right there's nothing nothing down at the bottom nothing nothing under my my under my sleeves or, or in my brain right now so what we want to do is while you're signed into chrome this only works when you're signed into chrome click the new tab button and you might see some little circles of pages where you've gone to a lot and you're wondering why they're there it's because Google has decided you like these pages and you go to them a lot. So they're going to save them for you in this shortcut area. All right. If you see a shortcut that you don't want to appear here, because maybe you have a bookmark somewhere or you just don't want to see it here, you can hover over the, the one that you want to delete. And you can click the skinny snowman, the more actions, the settings, whatever you want to call it, next to it as it comes up. Click. And we can edit the shortcut or we can remove it. So let's, re I'm going to remove this one. Boom. Okay. Um, let's say there is a website that I go to a lot and I really do want it to be on this home page, right? This new tab page because I use it a lot. How do I add it? How do I get that? You're going to click on the add shortcut button okay you're going to name it whatever you want it's up to you tdls and then you're going to type in the url now you don't have to do it this way you could actually go to the website and then add it but i'm going to do it this way tdls oops make sure you spell it right when you're typing in the url because otherwise it won't open you'll get a 404 error right so here's the tdls Right, so if when I click it, it opens for me. I don't have to add a bookmark. Woohoo! Um, that's in the new tab. Whenever you open up a new tab, you'll see these shortcuts. If you're on your Gmail, you might see something that looks like your Amazon, uh, your Amazon shopping cart. It's just Google remembering. Oh, you've gone to Amazon a lot at work, at home. I'm I'm sure, uh, or you go to YouTube a lot. It will save it for you. So you can edit those shortcuts. Um, I could edit this one, the Google Calendar. I can edit it. I can make it anything I want right now. I don't have to have I don't have to have it go to calendar.google.com and I don't have to call it Google, Google Calendar. I could call it Google. So you can do what you want with these book, these shortcuts, I should call them. Um, yes, they're kind of like bookmarks, but they're right there in front of you every time you open a new tab. So yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on so far? I'm looking at the chat. Nope. Okay. Uh, moving on. We did that one. We did that. Ooh, we're moving fast. Okay. Extensions. Um, a lot of people already know what extensions are. They extend the functionality of a product uh, online. So extensions on Chrome let you do more on Chrome. That, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Extensions on Chrome let you do more on Chrome. So if you're on Chrome and you see this little puzzle piece, that's their logo for an extension. I'm going to click it because a lot of people don't know that they can pin their extensions. They can make them stick on their extensions bar. So all of these to the left of my puzzle piece, my extensions logo, these are all the ones that I use a lot and that I have pinned. Okay. And I pin them by, guess, <laughs> clicking the pin next to an extension. If you don't see your a long list of extensions, then you want to click on manage. Okay. And then all of your extensions open up and you can enable them or disable them. Uh, I'm going to um, show you right here. Here's QR code generator. I don't really use this one anymore. So I'm going to disable it. I'm not removing it. I'm just disabling it for now because 
I might have found something better than I have using Google. Okay. Um, you know, if, if you want to remove something because you really don't use it anymore or it's just not floating your boat, you can click remove. All right. So I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people have extensions already. That's why I showed you this first before I showed you how to get extensions. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to leave this extension manager open. I always type it in. Chrome extensions in my address bar or my Omnibox, whatever you want to call it. I guess I could bookmark it, but I just type it. Um, and then I can search for an extension. Um, and let's say, uh, what, um, 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 uh, QR code. All right, QR code generator. Let's say we're having a conference and I want QR codes for our conference. Uh, so I would go to Chrome Web Store, or click or um, type Chrome extensions in the Omnibox, click on extensions when it comes up, it'll come up in the search, and then type what I want to find in the, uh, the, the search, okay? Once I do that, I can look at the extensions that are available. I can click to see how many people are using it. This is really important because if only five people are using it and it has a five-star rating, that's not going to, to make me feel good, okay? If only five people are using it, yeah, five-star rating, that's great, but five people, no. So I have a, um, I'd like to having four stars or better on any extension that I install. The add to Chrome button's right there. If I read it, if I look at it, if it doesn't look like it has a lot of tech support issues, because you can look at the support box, uh, limit on quantity of QR codes. Is there a limit? Um, someone's asking. There is no limit at all. It never expires. So, you know, I read through this. I figure out, okay, this sounds all right. So I'm going to add to Chrome. Once you do that, it's going to ask you some questions. Do you want to add this? And I'm thinking something might have, oh, no, it didn't. Okay. If you are on a network, if you're using your work account, you might get a message that says, this extension has not been approved. Okay. So if I really like what this extension is doing, I go to my Gmail and I add it there and I will not be precluded from, <laughs> from adding it. Remember I told you, when you're signed into your home account, your network can't really do anything to your Chrome account, okay? Whether you're at home or at work. That's why I have both of them open at the same time. It helps me a lot, especially when I'm sharing between the two accounts. So I've got this added to Chrome, big surprise. I didn't expect that. I expected to get the message, uh, but I also see that it's not pinned. So here's the QR code generator. And now I have this grayed out pin next to it. I don't have that many extensions. That's why I don't have a big long list. All I have to do is click it. It turns blue, it's been pinned. So it's always there for me to use. If I have a lot of extensions, and if you're an extension junkie, you might want to unpin some of your extensions doesn't mean that you can't use them. It just means that you have to get to them a different way. Okay, um, they'll be listed here. You just click it and it will open. All right, if it's allowed, if it's allowed by your network. All right, so that's how you add um, extensions. We've gone over how to manage extensions, open up the puzzle piece, go to manage, boom, you can remove them. You can look at the details, which is basically just opening up Chrome Web Store. You can turn them on and turn them off. Oops, turn them off and then turn them on. <laughs> All right. All righty. Questions? Moving on. OK. <laughs> and again, this is all in the handout. Um, my favorite extensions. I love Color Pick Eyedropper. I use this bad boy a lot. That's why it's first in line. And it's pinned. So what I do is when I'm creating uh, drawings or, or, or screenshots or something, and I want to know what this exact color is right here, I will turn on the extension. And you can see this is turned into a, a crosshair, right? And I get the color I want. Maybe I wanted the color of the S right there. Or I want the color, the yellow color of the, I want the exact color. So I'm going to click right there on the exact color. Now you notice this right here, this 
code. It's called a hex code. It's FBBDO5. I could write that down or just remember it. That's not going to happen. So what I do is I copy it. Command C or Control C. All right. And then I close the color picker. That's the important part. I just hit that X. Now I'm going to go, let's say I've got a uh, handout open and I actually want to create a colored button, the exact color. So here's, I've drawn a square. I'm going to go to my paint bucket. I'm going to select custom. I'm not going to try and figure out what yellow it is. I'm going to hit custom and now I'm going to command V or control V. I'm going to paste the hex code and there it is right there. And you notice the little paint eye went right where it should. I'm going to say, okay, that color is the exact color of the share button. I can do this on any website, any website. If I want the exact color of blue that this blue is, I can get it. If I go to the OTAN website and I want the exact color of the the bar at the top i can get it and then i can re i can create better screenshots that way so color picker i love that one awesome screenshot record um i made elisa takuchi a, a SME almost cry when i showed her this you can capture an entire page using this extension so let's say i go to voa english and the voice of america i'll just go to voice of america uh yeah learning english that's usually safe okay um and it's got this let's say it's got this big long article that i need for my my class well i want it but I, I, i'm gonna have to take what five screenshots to get it no if with this extension awesome screenshot and screen recorder you click on it you make sure you're on the capture tab and then you click full page boom and it, you take your hands off your mouse and you let it do the voodoo it wants to do. And it is capturing the entire page. And then you wait for it to, again, you gotta wait for the dribbles to run. They're running as fast as they can. And sometimes they weren't fed yesterday or this morning, whatever. So, you know, they're eating and running at the same time. So here we go, here's the page. At this point, I could annotate I could say, okay, I want you to read this article. So I'm going to make a circle around it. Or I could save it. Um, or I could download it. Okay. And when I download it, I can, sometimes they let you, yeah, I didn't think so. Workspace folder, currently saved. Um, they've recently changed. So just just, they will give you some space where you can save it in a folder. They'll require you to sign in. Um, but I usually just download from here. I put it on my computer and then I can upload it anywhere I want. All right, so to prove it to you, here is the full page of the screenshot that I just took. Pretty big, pretty long, all right? And you can do all kinds of, of stuff with it after you do that, which leads me to <gasps> Google Draw. I love Google Draw. Have any of you used Google Draw? I want to see a raised hands of anybody that has used Google Draw to create their own screenshots. Come on, there's got to be at least one of you out there. A question here, Linda. Oh, question. On that, Go on ahead. The last, it just said, was the this is Stephanie was that whole page cast an, an extension? Yes. Uh, the whole page was grabbed with an extension called Awesome Screenshot. Awesome Screenshot. Okay, so when you go to the Chrome Web Store, go to Extensions and just type in Awesome. You might have to type Screenshot too. I kind of doubt it, but Awesome Space Screenshot will give you this little icon of this. The let me, yeah, and you can't really see that icon all that well. Let me go to my manage extensions. Here it is. Here's details. Come on, come on, come on. Where's the website? La, 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 la. You're going to have to trust me. It's, it looks like this. Here we go. I can, I can zoom in. Da, na, 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 na. There we go. So it's got kind of a rainbow gradient around it and then a little camera thing in it. There you go. Okay, good. So I'm going to go back to zero. So it looks like Jennifer is the only one that are, do I, are there more hands raised that has used screenshot or Google Draw? 
to create screenshots. Oh, you guys are missing out on so much. I'm closing some tabs. Here we go. Let me go. Let me zoom out here because I wanted to see. I want you to see something. Here are all of the screen grabs or images you are going to see in not all, but most of the, the images that you're going to see in this handout that I'm going to share with you. So this one right here, does that look familiar? Because it should. I just showed it to you. Here it is. OK, here's the image. I just moved it up. I'm moving it down. Why do I do this? Because when I created a screen grab of Zoom and I have a, um, I have it showing up black, OK, I get all these gray icons, which people can't see. They're not crisp, right? I tried it using a white uh, where uh, Zoom was the white background with the black. It still, everything was kind of grayed out. It was pixelated. It was bleh, right? So I said, okay, fine mess with me, I'm going to create my own images. Not only that, but when you create your own images, you can make things bigger to make them stand out. So if you really want your students to see where the chat is, you can make it yellow and pop out when you create your own images. So right here, here's the image. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I did. And yes, I have a lot of time on my hands. Actually, I don't. But <laughs> every one of these, this Right here, these are words. Okay, I can. I've made this one yellow. I could make it white again because it's mine. I can do what I want with it. Okay, the little green share button. I could change that to blue if I wanted, even though Zoom is green. Okay, I could make it a different green if I wanted. So it's a way to make images that will make sense not only to you but to your students or the staff that you're trying to show them how to do something. So like, you know, how do I tell how many participants without opening participants? How can I tell how many people are in the room? Well, there's gonna be a little number. Well, I don't see it. Okay, it's right here. I, okay, I can make it bigger. Um, and then after you create an image, here's the fun part. You can download them as pings so that you can add alt text. So here is an image that we're going to see coming up that has to do with calendars. All right. So I didn't want people to see the email addresses. So what I did was I created a box with some text on top. All right. And I made sure that my canvas, you see what I'm doing? I'm making the canvas bigger and now I'm making it smaller. This is your work area. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here. So you can see this is your work area. This entire white space is your work area. This, what I'm making bigger and smaller, is your canvas. All right, so I just made the canvas small enough to fit around my image. Then I can go to File, Download, Ping. Ping! And it will go to my desktop. I'm going to call it demo because I think I've already, yeah, I've already got it in there as entitled. All right. And then when I go to insert that image, what did I call it? Demo. Here it is. Open it. Now it's not a lot of different parts. It's just one. It's just one. You also might want to start trying to use drawings when you take screen grabs of other websites because you'll get a crisper image sometimes, sometimes. You have to do a couple of things first. I'm gonna get this out of the way and I'm gonna get this out of the way. All right, so this canvas is actually pretty small right here. This is probably about a three by four square. I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna make it bigger and I'm gonna make it bigger. I'm gonna make it huge. When you take screenshots of a website, I'm going to go to OTAN.us. Let's say I just want a screen grab of this top part here with the menu. All right. So I'm going to go to my, um, on a Mac, I have a little screen grab. On, on a PC, you have your own. You, I hope you know where that is because I have no idea what to tell you. Um, but on Max, I can go here and I can figure out, okay, I want it about this big and I just want this top part. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to make, I'm going to scroll over. Blah, 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 blah. 
telling you about right there. Okay. And now I'm going to, there's a lot of ways to do it on a Mac. I'm just going to show you what to do once you get that picture in your drawing. If I paste a picture and the picture is bigger than my canvas, what I do is I delete the picture and I make my, my canvas bigger. I make my canvas bigger. When you take a picture, when you take a screen grab on your computer, you are actually getting a much bigger, it's snipping on PC. Thank you, Anna. So you get a bigger image than what you think. When you paste the image into a slide deck or a PowerPoint, what that the image, what, or I'm sorry, what the app will do, what the PowerPoint or even Google Slides will do is they will automatically resize it for you so it fits on the slide. I don't want that to happen. I want the image to retain its crispness, right? So how many times have we taken a screen grab and it looks fine, but then when we're showing it, it's all pixelated, right? So what you need to do is remember that the screen grabs that you're getting are really big. Like when you take a picture with your camera or your uh, your phone, they're actually like 36 inches by 50 inches, believe it or not. They're not two by three. So go to a website. Uh, I'm gonna try this again because I got too much stuff open on my, bum, 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 bum. here we go, uh, five. All right, I'm gonna make this big. And we're going to go like this. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I want all of this stuff. Da -da 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 -da. And we're going to copy it. And then somehow, whatever, however we do it, we're going to paste. There we go. When our canvas is bigger than the picture, that's a good thing. Now I can put the picture up in the top corner and I can resize my canvas by clicking in the lower right corner like that i can even crop it a little bit because whatever my canvas um, is not on like this part right here won't be in my picture all right um i can i can add things i can annotate right i could add let's say add a little arrow um there we go learn more about otan i can color that uh, okay all right and now I go to File, Download, ping, ping. I get a message that comes up, demo two. And I remember what I called it. <laughs> and then when I go to the slide where I want it to appear, I go to Insert, Image, Upload from Computer. Now it will stay. It will be the size that I want it to be huge oh my god it's so big right i don't want it that big that's okay watch we can resize it we all know how to resize not a big deal and that way my picture my screen grab will retain more of its crispness than what it would if i just took a screen grab and then pasted it okay trust the magic let the google drawings make your pings uh jpeg just means that there's going to be a white background. If you have any space on your canvas, it'll just be white behind it. Which sometimes you want that to happen. Uh, vector, I've had some success with vectors. Play with it. I think you can uh, you can still do scalable ve vector downloads. So create your own images. If for nothing else, then because you can uh, you can manipulate it. You can make it yellow if you want. I think I saw a question in the chat. Wait, wait, oh, oh. Here it is. Okay, especially help if you have a set for students you want to point out. Yes, if you want to point out where a specific thing is, like I want you all to click on chat. Chat is this big thing right, right here. Do you see it yellow on my screen, but it's white on yours? Look for chats between participants and share, right? So, all right, Google Arts and Culture. Oh my God, I love this site. Has anybody used Google Arts and Culture? Type yes in the chat if you have. Aha, I didn't tell you to raise your hand. Type yes in the chat if you have. No, if you have not. Google Arts and Culture. Somebody says yes. Ah, Jennifer, yes. Yeah, okay, I gotta know, I gotta know, I gotta know. Oh my God, you people are, you're missing out on some good stuff. Good stuff. So I'm gonna type Google 
art and culture in my Omnibox. Okay, it becomes it's the first link naturally. And I tell you what, also what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this so I can uh, paste it into the handout. Oh, come on. Oh, the heck with it. I'm just going to click on it. <laughs> so I can get the link. It wouldn't come up here. Come on. Where's my gerbil? There's my gerbil. Okay. Google Arts and Culture. This is so cool. So today they are celebrating World Wildlife Day. Yesterday, this was something else. So what they've done is they've curated a lot of artwork from all over the world, from lots of different museums. They've also curated historical um, lessons uh, and put it all in Google um, Arts and Culture. So I mean, this is, I, we could have like a five hour workshop on this. I'm gonna just do a quick, quick overview here. So what I did was I clicked on the hamburger on the or hot dog, whatever you want to call it, the settings on the far left hand corner. All right. Um, I like historical events. So I'm going to select that. And some cards are going to come up. And we can list them A to Z. All right? I can look for the events that Start with an E. Here we go. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of wars in our, our human existence. So a lot of war stuff comes up, um, unfortunately. So, but you you find what you want, OK? Maybe the homestead strike, all right? And then you can read about it. If there are any articles about it from newspapers, they'll have that. I don't think that, I've never clicked on this before, so I, I, I don't didn't know what was going to happen. But there is a picture that someone took. Uh, we can read more about it. Uh, here's the picture. There we go. The iron and steel industry in southwestern Pennsylvania was never the same. And there we go. We can just I'm scrolling down the bloody confrontation. So if you're doing anything about um, strikes or yes, about women, women's women in history, you bet. Uh, for that, we might go to historical figures, right? And also, along with the A to Z, I want to show you time, because if you're looking at a specific time period, you can actually use this bar to go back to, wow, 500 BCE? Really? OK, let's do that. And there we go. Who knew <laughs> All right, that we can go back in time to find these historical figures? Um, so here we go. Uh, Maximinian? Severus Alexander, a lot of Romans way back when, but you can go through time. So let's go something more, a little more recent, maybe uh, trying to pick a safe time period. <laughs> That's hard. Between the 1920s and the 1940s, here we go. Gandhi, right, we can read about Gandhi. There's different stories. Uh, we can see all the artwork and or pictures that were taken of them. Lots of different stuff here. And you can also add this to favorites. So when you click on favorites, you can add the, that thing that you found to favorites, all right, so that you can come back to it. So here's a brief history of vaccination. If you wanted to read about that, I, I bookmarked that quite about two years ago, actually. <laughs> I was trying to show somebody something. All right, so um, there was something else here. I went, oh, a coloring book. So within Google Arts and Culture, there are, let's see, I think, hmm, I can't remember where I found it last. I'm going to go to experiments. They have a lot of cool experiments here. Uh, here we go. Voices for Change, a global world brings to life thousands of voices. So launch some of these experiments. They're really cool. <sighs> Coloring book used to be right here. I do have a screenshot of it on the slide. It was something that I took a while back. I'm scrolling. I know I'm scrolling fast. I'm sorry. I'm look. Ah, there it is. OK, coloring book right here. I'm going to launch this experiment. They also have puzzle party. This is kind of new. I haven't looked at it, but it works the same way kind of as the coloring book. So I'm going to launch this. So I don't know if you recognize this painting or any of these other paintings. These are famous paintings, right? So. You look at the painting, you go, oh, hmm, coloring book, huh? So I'm going to click this one, the guy in the field. The uh, Google is has created a color palette. And I can choose a color 
from the color palette and click an area and it becomes that color. It's kind of like painting by numbers in a way. Um, there's layers here as well. I mean, you can, you can look at the original picture. Um, you can create your own layer or outlines. All right, here's outlines. Here's the background. Ooh. Um, turn them both off. There we go. Outlines. Uh, so I want to play. I want that to be light brown. I want this to be dark brown. Um, it's really fun. I mean, if nothing else, if you have kids, <laughs> this will keep them entertained for a couple of hours. So use, look at some of the experiments, though, because some of these I'm thinking you can use with your students. Uh, there's an emotions map. Hmm. You know, we're really worried about our students and how they are, even our staff, how they are dealing with all of this, uh, this remoteness. So look at some of these experience, experiments and I'm sure you're going to find something that you can use. Uh, what else we got here? I'm going back to my slides. So games, experiments, we've talked about art from all over the world. Use that site. Workspace tips. I've already talked about this. Uh, when you're in the club, you have to do, you have to be quite proper and do what the club tells you to do. You have to wear a suit and tie at times. You have to come in the front door, not the back. But when you're in the pub, you can do it down well anything you want, right? So when you're in the pub, you can add extensions whether they're allowed or not in the club. <laughs> so use two accounts if you're at work. Uh, that's my advice. It's not against the law. It's not going to be against your district's law. You can do some things in your personal Google account than you can with your club account, because especially for adult education um, or adult educators, what you're doing is you're working with adults. Well, you're in a workspace that is uh, geared towards K-12, or you're in a district that uses a K-12 Google. So they're protecting, and if, if you don't mind, I'm going to go in an accent here. They're protecting the wee tots, right? So the wee ones, they can, they can, they're in a basement. They're in a basement and they can't look out and nobody can look in, which is good because we don't want anybody to look in at our students. We don't want them to get any information. We don't want our students sharing any information because they don't know better sometimes. So they're in the basement. It's a nice basement, but they're only allowed to do so much, right? So as teachers with adults, you don't have to worry about that, <laughs> right? But you're still using that network. So you have to kind of work with those rules, along with working within the pub. In the pub, you can down well anything you want, can't you? Yeah, you can take your, your password, you can throw it up against the wall and change it anytime. You can't always do that in the network. So use the pub while you're using your network, and you'll uh, you'll be able to do a lot more. All right, enough of that. Applied digital skills. Oh my God, what Google has done is it has created this digital skills uh, platform to teach teachers and students how to become digitally uh, technologically savvy. Uh, applied digital skills. I'm going to just jump right into it. Applied digital skills. It's all one word with google.com. Applied digital skills with google.com. It will, I mean, I'm already signed in. I'm already signed in, but I do have to click on the sign in button and I have to accept that um, I'm using the ELMS, which is just a, a it's an LMS, okay, a learning management system that Google puts in play. So everyone looks at our, some people have looked at that and gone, oh, Melinda, can I do this? Hey, yeah, 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 it's all right, it's okay. So once you're in there, you can create classes and invite your students to do lessons that Google already has curated for you. Lessons on how to uh, use any of the Google digital tools like drawings. You want to learn how to use drawings? Click on drawings in the digital tool filter and you will learn how to use drawings. And at the end of the lesson, you will have a finished product. So at the end of make a promotional flyer, I'm thinking you're going to have a promotional flyer at the end of it. These are all video based lessons. You are walked through 
your students are walked through how to do something. And within each lesson, you're going to find teaching materials. And within the teaching materials, you're going to find lesson plans and you're going to find rubrics. Look at the lesson plan. If you like what you see, you can save a copy of it to your drive to use with the lesson that you're going to be adding to your applied digital skills class. Uh, this class that we could create if we wanted to, we can add it to a class right now. This is not Google Classroom. You can add lessons to Google Classroom. You can add any of the applied digital skills lessons to Google Classroom. It's a little wonky the way it works. It's actually sharing the lesson into the classroom. And that way it's, it's gradable, but it's the entire lesson. It's not each separate little part of the lesson that you're grading. It's the entire thing. So there are one, two, three, four videos here. There's a quiz. And then there's some ex recommended extensions that you can get. If I see a, 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 a what is that, a paperclip, then I know that my students can submit work to the teacher in my class. Um, it's really simple and easy to use. I'm not going to go over exactly how to use this. We do have a workshop on it with several different trainers that are qualified to do this training. So if you want more information on applied digital skills, contact me and we'll have a fuss and discuss just session. Okay. Accounts. Your account, I don't know. Most of you already know two factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to have my phone with me and say, okay. Or I'm not doing two factor. Ah, it's too much work. No, no, no. Do it. Do it. It will protect you. Um, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay. You just have your phone and it, a little message comes up. Someone's trying to sign into your account and you just say yes because you know it's you. Or if you look at that and go, wait a minute, I'm not, okay, nope, nope, click no. And then you'll have to, you'll, be prompted to go through a maybe a password change or uh, it'll tell you exactly where the account uh, is trying to be accessed from and they oh yeah 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 this is a shared account it's fine so you can find out that way but um, within accounts I don't know if anybody's taking a real good look at this you you have security recommendations so I've gone to accounts.google.com this you've got it on the club or the pub the club is your school account. The pub is the at Gmail account. When you click on that, it's going to tell you whether or not you have, you know, you, you, you've given access to e ELMS, LMS. Is that okay? And if you don't recognize that extension, then you can remove access. Okay, now I recognize all of this stuff, so I just leave it alone. But I do check this every once in a while. Your devices, your site, I have four signed in devices. I do. I'm sorry, I have to check. This. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm back to is this device uh, 30 minutes ago. Okay, that was my laptop. That's why. Okay, so I had four signed in devices today. I didn't expect that. So you can check it out. If you don't recognize a device that's currently signed in, you can kick it out of the pool. Out of here. Now, if you have to do anything, like that, like kick a device out, or you don't recognize uh, somebody or something, some device that's come into your account. Does anybody know what they should do at that point? Come on, humor me, somebody. You can mute, unmute, or is there still anybody here? Remove it. Remove it. Remove the account? Yes, remove the device, but then what? Come on, you're on a roll. Remove the device and then delete the account. <laughs> no, my God, if I had to delete this account, I would die. No. <laughs> it's got so much information in it. Change the password. Yes, Jennifer, you get a prize. Not sure what it is. We'll discuss later. Um, small bills. <laughs> so check your account every once in a while. Um, and here's the thing about pay passwords. And I know many of you do this. And I cringe every time I see this. I'm going to go to my Chrome my Chrome settings, I'm going to go to settings. And I am going to, I'm just going to type for it because I don't do it. So I don't know where it is. Passwords. If you have anything that is auto filling payment methods, if you have anything that is filling in passwords, 
those of you that have attended my uh, workshops, you know I'm going to yell at you. Don't do it, folks. I know it makes our lives easier just to click and everything's filled in for us, but you are opening yourself up to a lot of bad juju. And I mean that. Please don't have, and I don't care what the browser is or how safe they say it is. Safari thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread. And we know when nobody is ever going to get into your account. It's happened here at the Sacramento County Office of Education to a network person who knows, who knows things, right? They had Safari save a password to their bank. Now, right away, some of you would probably, well, I would never do that. Well, why do you have it save your Amazon? Why do you have it save your, your, your work, right? Isn't there stuff there that might be sensitive as well? The answer is yes. If, if for nothing else, your students' emails, okay? So I'm gonna get off my soapbox. No, I'm not. I'm gonna say, <laughs> please don't save passwords to a browser. Um, you know, and I know it, it, it's, it's, it's quick and it's easy and it's convenient, right? I know why you do it. I do. But I have yet to save a password to a browser ever in my life. Um, I'm not being goody two shoes on you. I'm just saying I, I learned a lesson a long time ago, but it wasn't me learning it. It was somebody else. Um, so, okay, off my, off my soapbox right now. So, Use two-factor, don't save your passwords. Check your account security every once in a while. Calendar, use more than one. When you so have a calendar- So Melinda, question. Go ahead. Uh, don't say, so where can we save passwords? Nowhere? In your brain, or oh. write them on a piece of paper and hide it, or use a, um, a uh, reputable password protection app. Uh, LastPass is one. Uh, Norton has some. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. If anybody has one that they use, please chime in, type it in the chat. So I know, you know, we're required to have passwords that are eight characters long and, and have an upper and lower case and this and that, and then, you know, have to be changed every six months, blah, 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 blah. Um, is there a place in preferences where we can see if we have any passwords saved? Yes. So in Chrome, I'm going to go to my pub account because it, it's not allowed at our SCOE account. <laughs> You're not allowed to do it. So I'm going to go to settings because I am allowed to do it on the pub, but I don't. I am going to, so I've gone to, um, you can do it two ways. You can go to the more button, click on it, and then go to settings, or you can just type Chrome colon slash slash settings. I can't put it in the chat because it won't open for you. You have to type it in. All right, so Chrome colon slash slash settings. Now, the, again, I don't use it, so I don't, I think it's probably in security and pass and um, security and privacy. So I'm just going to type password in the search. Okay. And here I have autofill. Okay. And there's passwords. So I'm going to click where it says passwords. And where it says offer to save passwords, you know, I have it turned off. So it's not asking me, do you want us to save this password? We'll, we'll do it for free. It's safe. I promise you, no, I don't want that message. <laughs> so I turn it off. When it's gray, it's off. When it's blue, it's on, okay? Also there, you wanna turn off auto sign in. Oh, wouldn't it be much easier if we put in your name for you? Yeah, you know, I, I need the typing practice, so I'll go ahead and type my name. So I turn that off. Uh, check passwords, no save passwords. Chrome can check your passwords when you save them. So I don't have any. You might have something when you click on this arrow next to check your passwords. Uh, we can also view and manage saved passwords in your Google account or saved password. I don't have anything appearing here. So there you go. I can't really show you beyond that, Sherry. Or oops, not Sherry. Who was that? I know Sherry would never do, would never have done that. Uh, Stephanie or Stefan, whoever it was. I'm trying to look through the chat. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. It was helpful. Good. All right. On calendar, um, I'm using my pub again. You can, my, uh, my own calendar with this account is called, I called it SCOE Tech. I know that's my personal calendar on this account. 
All right. I have also shared calendars with myself. So I am, I, we have an account called OTAN where OTAN schedules trainings. And I shared that calendar with my public self so I could see it. So I wouldn't have to bounce between calendars. I just, I can just look at it. The OTAN account allowed me, SCOE Tech, to see the events. So I can turn those events on and I can turn those events off by clicking the checkbox next to it. So you can share your calendar with yourself. I'm gonna go back to my work, uh, my work Google. I'm gonna open up my work calendar on Google. And you notice OTAN schedule is still here because I saved it or I shared it with this person too, or the OTAN, the OTAN account shared it with me, right? So it appears. So I can turn the OTAN events on and off, okay? And here is my public, my public. I shared my pub calendar with myself. I also shared my home calendar with myself, which I'm not going to show to you, but on that home calendar, I want to see when my doctor's appointments are, right? So I can turn that on and see it right here on my work account. So I have a calendar shared with my work calendar, shared with my SCOE trainer calendar. So all of my calendars are kind of connected. I can also, or I have also on my, uh, on my personal calendar, I'm just going to show you here on my home calendar, I added a calendar by going to calendar settings. Here we go. I'm going to go to settings, settings, redundant, but that's what you got to do. And you can add a calendar, let's say for uh, doctor's appointments. Okay. And then share that with your work calendar. So you can turn it on and turn it off. Um, I only, you know, I, I trust myself. <laughs> so I give myself edit rights to a calendar. You can, um, you can, if you don't trust yourself, that's pretty sad, but you can trust anybody you want. Okay. You can give them whatever share rights you want on calendar. So I had this question come up uh, a couple of weeks ago, someone, well, can I share my, my personal calendar with somebody else? Yeah, you can, but I wouldn't do that. Um, I would create another calendar if there was like a book club that we were part of. I would create another calendar called book club and then share that with them so they don't see all my other stuff, right? So that's calendar. I think I saw a question come in the chat. Can I merge two calendar events such as holidays? Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it, Wilder? Um, I know. Yeah. So I'm going to show you here. Uh, let's see. The, whose account is that? Yeah, I'm on work. All right, so I took, this is my work account. Now I'm gonna turn on my trainer account. So you see TDLS is listed twice. I can't merge those. I could just put it on one calendar. That would be fine. Um, but you can see I'm gonna be taking vacation. By the way, folks, I'm gonna be out of the office from the 25th through the April 1st. <laughs> no joke, <laughs> I really am. So, but yeah, you can't merge events, but you could just list it on one calendar and turn it on and turn it off. So I tell you, I'm going to click this and I'm going to delete it. So you see, I still see that I'm on vacation. NC is non-contract. So I still see that I'm on vacation, um, but that's not on this calendar. Okay, so that's one way to, I mean, for lack of a better word, it's kind of a merge, but it's just appearing on one calendar, not two. Um, is there a way for Outlook appointments to sync with Google only if your network allows it? Drusy. Um, so there is in settings, you can download your, uh, your Outlook calendar and then upload it into Google. But the syncing, mm, nope, it won't because your network won't allow it because that is actually like a pipe between two apps. And I, I'm almost positive that won't be allowed. Sorry. Uh, talk to me later, though, because I just thought of something, but it would take too long to, to explain. All right, so we got calendar covered. Uh, Drive apps. This is new, and I can show you right here on this account. I'm going to see how new. Let's see. How new is it? It's pretty new. All right, so Google does not have a save button. Everyone knows that, right? They know that shtick. 
you can hit Control S or Command S if you want, but it'll do absolutely nothing other than make you feel better, right? Well, um, people started complaining that, well, how do we know it's saved? Well, you have to trust it. Well, we don't want to trust it. We want to know it's saved, right? So every once in a while, you'll see this cloud next to your folder or move tool, I should say. You'll see this little cloud. It'll um, either a gerbil will run or it'll change colors. Okay, and when it changes colors, what it's doing is it's saving. So when I see this little check mark, I know it's done. I'm synced. I'm sunk. It's synced. Okay, so it's saved. And when I click on the document status, I will see that all changes are saved to Google Drive. But here's the new thing that they just added to this little cloud. What if I decide, you know, I'm working on this and, and trying to get it done, and then I gotta, I'm gonna be out of town. I'm going to El Centro, where the internet is not gonna be all that great. So I can turn on offline use. Boom. Turn on offline use for all files. Turn on offline use to access. Da, 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 da. Just, okay, and I can turn it on. Boom. And once that is on, that means that offline has been enabled on this device. Now, would I do it on this device? No, because it's my desktop, <laughs> okay? So, but when I open up my laptop, I would turn it on so that the, uh, the documents would be sync, synced to that device so that when I have internet, everything is fine, it's saving. Right. And when I don't have Internet, I can still work on it. And then when the Internet comes back, boom, it sinks. OK, so they just added that uh, once I turn it on. Can you turn it off? Yes, you can. But you have to go back to the apps home. So I go to slides home and I can turn it off there.